it's not just the health care it's all utility com utility companies all the power companies everybody that has any control over us here in America I know that I, I it is everybody um that said though the hospitals are a little different and here's why because there's there's innocent people in their hospitals so like at the utilities company yeah are they hurting people are they because they're going along with this um this agenda that's to overthrow america's constitution yeah they are but in the hospital there those are where your most vulnerable are children are the elderly are and yet the hospitals have been on board with this for a long time this goes back to the 60s really when this when at least this agenda started with um usurping the united states this way it, it really you know your bill Ayers, i use bill Ayers and bernadine dorn as an example the ones that blew up buildings in the 60s well after they decided they were tired of doing that they went into the universities because they figured that was the best way it was just like what why Ronald Reagan said, um, you're always one generation away from communism because when they get into the education system, they turn the kids. And that's that's exactly what uh, Bill Ayers was, uh, that's what he was, that's what him and his wife went on to do. So instead of their cause doing it by blowing up buildings, they, just, they did the Saul Alinsky path, which is rules for radicals. And Obama helped with that because Obama, as far as the health care system went, brought in Obamacare, and that's when all the hospitals started monopolizing, which was always alarming to me because you knew then it was going to be one power over. It wouldn't be any competition, but um, it's worse than that because they knew this was coming. So you have to have some real um, psychopaths running your your hospitals for them to have gone along with this there's there's no way these pe these people know what they're doing the do, do, it, is the staff falling in line with health equity yes because these people at the top doing this they know they just have to repeat this stuff enough times and you just come to accept it that's why communism comes in without a without even a gunfire because after having social socialism long enough then people will start to social justice themselves and say, no, that's a white person. They don't deserve anything. That's what happens. That's why they keep pushing it. That's why in all the papers, in the peer reviewed, as if those have any credibility anymore, especially now, but um, they continually push diversity, equity, inclusion. It's They say these words over and over again for a reason, and it's to... Because, and it's all part of that. They know exactly what they're doing. It's a total playbook that's been used over and over again. So the hospital CEOs are worse than the power companies, in my opinion, or any other CEO. Like I've said this before, it's not, it's one thing for your retail, like your big box retail CEOs, like Walmart, to go along with it. But it's a whole different story when you're talking about all the healthcare CEOs, because they have vulnerable patients in their hospital. And yet everything they've been doing over at least the past 10 years has been designed for this um, usurping of the United States, which means those, th that's why, if anything, many of those CEOs, in my opinion, should go to the gallows. They should go to the gallows, some of them. Because, I, I mean, there's been patients in psychiatric hospitals that, that have killed themselves. And it's always the same reason why it happens. There's not enough staff. The CEOs are never held accountable. It just ends up being a civil trial. Those CEOs should go to jail. Because for every death that that happens, it's because they deliberately, because of this agenda, this health equity agenda they're on, they've wanted, they deliberately, if you listen to James Lindsay, it, it's part of that playbook. He, he, I posted several videos by James Lindsay. But they wanted to push nurses out. So, like, they brought in, the, they mandated the COVID vaccine to get nurses to quit. And here's why. The diversity in DEI, it's not about bringing in diverse people. It's about wanting as many people to quit because then they'll bring in like-minded people that are for their cause. And others that are just cheap labor, like your illegal immigrants, then they don't have to pay them health care. 
and they'll, those people will just go along because it's a job. They've wanted the nurses out, and they've done it. They've done that at other places too. That's why they put. That's why all these employers pushed, uh, mandated the vaccine. They they knew nurses would quit. They, they but they've known that for years. They've been, they, they've been all along. Everything they've been doing has been so sabotaging that it makes people quit. They do it on purpose. So that's what makes it really sick. So sick in 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 the healthcare CEOs because they're actually putting patients deliberately at risk. Because when you don't give enough staff to a behavioral health unit, and I mean, it, that goes for any unit, but in my case, behavioral health, then you do run the risk that there's, they literally think that you're supposed to spread yourself so thin that you can do everything. You, you can't, it's, it's, they literally make it to where they set you up to fail, and, but who that ends up hurting is a patient. So that that's, they're, they're, they're really just murderers, you know, um, maybe not direct ones, but they set the conditions in place for that to happen. I mean, that hospital, um, uh, UHS, who I mentioned in my last video, they've been around a long time. They've been around a very long time. They know better. They know better. But see, that's part of the reason they pushed this whole, there's a nursing shortage. Because otherwise, if they don't say there's a nursing shortage, then they don't have an excuse. But because, oh, we don't have enough nurses, they all left because of stressed out, because of COVID, bullshit. They pushed them out, but, but they were pushing them out before COVID. They do, they, I've said how, um, when I was at Northwest, they will keep, it's not just Northwestern, other places, they, they deliberately, these CEOs, these upper corporate, they will keep physically, uh, physically violent employees literally where they've been been violent to patients more than once and yet you can have an entire hospital report them do a Midas which is an incident report and yet they'll say everybody else is targeting that employee when it's obvious it's on camera everything those are the people they'll keep though because it helps to divide the, the team there can't have teamwork when you have a violent employee that you know is not treating people right staff or patients so that there's no teamwork in that. They don't want there to be teamwork. Like they, they literally go out of their way to make your conditions miserable. They do. And if it's not like that at every hospital, it will be because they'll bring it in. They may not be as, as um, brazen in some places, but they, there's a reason they wanted a bunch of nurses to quit. So they do all these things, divide the team, because uh, they want to do some crazy, crazy things. And then the worst part is you have managers that go along with it, that don't question, why are we doing this? Why are we getting rid of this employee? Why are we, you know, they don't. And not that they'd have any power, but if they knew, if they knew what, they're, that what we're fighting here, like James Lindsay said, we're at the point now, you better stand, people need to stand up and fight. These people are not gonna stop. And by the time people realize that, no, you should have stood up and fight, it could be too late.